Next up is a powerful tool called Paste Duplicate. You can see on the right here that it's under the Copy and Paste shortcuts. And here it is, Control-Alt-D. So you've probably seen this scenario many times before where you've got some formulas here that are references to other parts of a model. And let's say I copy that and I want to paste it on the side to have the same outputs. But as soon as I paste it, it changes the reference and it's linking to other information. What I can do is copy all this, go over to the side here, and then press Control Alt D. And look at that, I get the same exact references and outputs that I had over here. So that way, if I want to make some changes over here to things in the model, this set of outputs uh, will be my reference point back to what I originally had. So this is very powerful, a very big time saver. It can be very frustrating when you want to copy something and paste it somewhere else with the exact same values or links. Huge time saver again. Now I'm going to show you how to use a quick kager or a quick compound annual growth rate formula. You could build this manually, of course, and we've covered this in other courses several times, but if you want to do it the fast way using Macabacus, you can really save some time. All you have to do is put your cursor next to the row of data that you want to calculate the kager on, in this case, sales, go up to formulas, hit quick kager, it's going to ask you to confirm the adjacent data, that that's the data you want to calculate it based on, whether it's annual, quarterly, or monthly data. In this case, it's annual. Hit OK, and boom, you've got your Kager right there. Press F2 to see the formula. This is one you could just build manually yourself, but of course, this saves a lot of time. Really handy. All right, this next Macabacus function is huge. This is a massive time saver. It's got multiple components to it in terms of formulas you'd normally have to build manually. Here we have some type of comps table. We're comparing companies based on certain metrics that you can see here. And typically at the bottom, we'd like to add some summary data, the mean, the median, min, max, things like that. Well, we'd have to calculate all those manually, not with Macabacus. We simply highlight all of the data that's in the table. Go to Formulas and Summary Statistics. You can see here then the list of things that we can add to the summary or things that we can remove. We can change the order of things with these arrows. We can also change the labels. So if we want to change average to mean, because mean makes us sound smarter than average, we can simply do that there. Press OK, and there you go. You've got these summary statistics at the bottom. And this would have taken a bunch of time to build the formulas for it manually. And we did all of that in just a few seconds. I love this feature in Macabacus. Moving over to the precedence and dependence sheet within the model and scrolling down a bit, we have an example if we hit F2 on the cell of a complex formula meaning it has various components that make it up, but it is fairly easy to audit by simply hitting F2 and seeing the components. If you were to trace precedence using Excel's native trace precedence function, you may run into an issue if those precedents are located in other parts of the worksheet or in other worksheets or other workbooks, and it may be very hard to manage. So Macabacus has created pro precedence as a much more powerful tool for auditing the precedence. So let's look at the shortcut that's over here on the right under auditing, pro precedence. It's control shift, open square bracket that is. When I do that, you see what happens here is that, first of all, I get the formula highlighted for me up top, and I'm able to scroll through the formula as each piece is highlighted, showing me the cell reference in the model, no matter where it is, could be located in any sheet. If I use the right arrow, I drill down to open up these expanded areas. So you can see that I'm able to move all throughout the worksheet to find all of these precedents and evaluate them. What's more, if I click on settings and then check this dialog box, which is evaluate functions and groups, what that does is it shows me the calculated value of something that I would otherwise 
not be able to know the value of. So norm dist k39, I don't know what norm dist k39 is going to be in terms of a value, but I can see here that the value of that is 0 0.738. So that's extremely helpful in auditing and tracing precedence. There's a lot more here, but this is enough to get you going with Pro Precedence, a very powerful auditing tool in Macabicus. Let's see how you can be way faster and way more effective at building charts with Macabicus. If we go into the charts area and click insert from library, we see here some sample charts that are preloaded and that we can grab to build a chart off. You can also create your own custom chart templates and share them with team members and save them here in Macabicus. Let's click on floating bar as an example. So if we click on this example and insert, you can now see that we've got the chart template inserted. So that's great. That saves us a bunch of time. But perhaps what's even more important is that it comes with a set of properly structured data. This is the part that can be tricky to figure out with some of the more advanced types of charts and graphs in Excel. How do you set up the data to populate the chart? Well, Macabicus solves all that for you. Now, all you have to do is go in and replace these values or these labels with the data that you want to use in your chart. So as you can see, the library is a great way of sharing formatted charts with your team and of getting this structured data in place so that you can quickly load in your own chart. A huge time saver. Let's look at another charting example. We'll go into charts, quick charts, where we have some of the most frequently used charts in finance and consulting. Let's use a football field chart. And you can see here that we have a dialog box that opens up and we can set some things here, like if we want solid lines or other styles, as well as colors. I'm just gonna leave it as the default for now. You can also change gap width and so on. You can click example if you want to preload some structured dummy data, which is recommended, and then press OK. So now you've got a functioning example to work off of and can change things and link it up in the model. And what's really helpful is this area right here, where now you can actually format the chart simply by clicking if you want to show the label, for example. Say you want to change the average line to be the median line. You can do so just by clicking. And then what's more, you can add another line called a bonus line. And with the bonus line, we are actually gonna have to input a value to be able to see it. Let's put that at $12. So here's the bonus line, or let's make it 1250 to bring it off the line a bit. There you go. And you can change the label of it from price. You could call it uh, target price. And there you have it. So this is a super easy and fast way to get amazing looking football fields in Excel without going through the native formatting process that can be very, very slow. You'll also notice that these lines that extend here span the entire width of the chart. If you were to do this natively in Excel, it would go from the midpoint of this column to the midpoint of the last column. And it looks a lot nicer and tidier here when it extends for the full width of the chart. So Macabicus has paid enormous attention to all these little details that add up to make fantastic charts and graphs. All right, let's take a look at some more advanced charting tools. You can see here that we have a stacked column chart. Let's imagine that these different series are revenue uh, or lines of business that add up to a total consolidated revenue figure for a company. This is a very common type of chart that you'll see in finance. And we wanna show a total across the top. Now, normally this is very hard to do in Excel. You have to add a secondary axis and you have to add up the total here, put on a secondary axis, change it to a different type of chart, remove the line. We've covered it in other courses several times. It's quite a few steps. With Macabicus, we can do this very rapidly. Let's go into charts and add-ons. And here we can add stack total for columns. Press OK. And what's incredible is you can see that it's actually added in the formula to give you the total here, and then it's inserted it into the chart. 
So that was done in about a couple of seconds. It would have taken several minutes to do manually. Now let's do another popular type of add-in for this chart. We're going to add a growth arrow. The growth arrow is a compound annual growth rate. This can be very helpful for interpreting the chart. And there are several different styles that we can choose from. You can have the elbow style. It could be an angle or flat, whatever you prefer. You can also, of course, change the color. You can change the weight of the line and so on. You can change it from annual to another time period. Lots of settings that you can choose here. Press OK and you've got that in place. So that just saved an enormous amount of time. Now, there are more add-ins that you can play around with. But as you can see, just these two alone, which are extremely popular, are huge time savers for you day in and day out as a financial analyst. A huge part of being a good financial analyst is being able to find errors or inconsistencies in spreadsheets. So let's take a look at this information here. This is a simple income statement with some calculated margins below. We want to make sure all the formulas are correct. We're going to go to visualize and click on formula flow. And right away we can see these patterns. And what we're looking for is an inconsistency in the pattern somewhere. And we can see right here, something must be going on because the pattern is different on this cell. And if we use F2 and we go and look around, we see that, yes, it is this one cell right here that has an inconsistent formula. If we copy the formula from the adjacent cell and paste it over, that fixes the pattern. So we're able to quickly see that now everything here is the same both horizontally and vertically, which is why we get this checkered style of pattern here, both vertical and horizontal consistency in these formulas now. All right, let's go back to visualize and let's clear these visualizations. Let's also bring back the error that we had earlier. Let's select this entire area, go to visualize and this time click dependency density. When we do that, we can see based on the intensity or the darkness of the shading, how many dependents there are on a certain cell. This is very helpful for, again, finding inconsistencies which would indicate an error in a formula. This cell here has no dependents, but all the other cells around it do have dependents. So there is an inconsistency here and an issue. And of course, we realize that this is the error. This is why nothing is dependent on this cell because there's a mistake down here. Now, in order to find this issue, you may be clicking around with the usual F2 and escape key sequence, but this is tedious and prone to error. So instead, with Mechabacus, you can go to one cell in this contiguous range here, click on visualize, and then uniformulas. And when you click on uniformulas, it highlights all of the cells that have a consistent formula. So we see right away the cell's not highlighted, so it's obviously inconsistent. So this is a very powerful way of finding and fixing errors using a combination of these visualization techniques. And of course, there are even more visualization techniques that we will use in later lessons and later courses. But this is a turbocharged way of finding errors and inconsistencies and fixing them in your spreadsheets.